Hello, my name is Leopold Armesto and in this presentation I'm going to explain uh, about microcontrollers used in IoT applications. So this is the outline of the presentation. First I will introduce uh, the microcontroller, uh, their signals, the type of memory, their architecture and some of the alternatives uh, that we use in, uh, for microcontrollers in IoT applications. Then also I will explain some of the commonly used electronics for IRT applications and provide some examples. So in microcontrollers there are different type of signals. Uh, we distinguish between digital and analog. Uh, a digital signal it varies between high and low states, so only has uh, two different types of states, while an analog signal varies within a specific range, so it has multiple values. Then in microcontrollers we have digital inputs which, uh, in which a external device controls the voltage and the microcontroller uh, just basically monitors the changes of the signal so it can read high or low. And, or we have uh, digital outputs where the microcontroller sets the voltage uh, to high or low depending on what, uh, what you want. And then we have also analog inputs in which we, we use a special kind of uh, circuit which is called ADC. It's a, a converter between analog and digital and um, they provide us a, a number, a decimal number, corresponding to the, uh, the, the analog uh, value of the signal. And we can find uh, converters with 10 bits or 16 bit resolutions or different kind of resolutions obviously. So also we have in microcontrollers we have a very uh, special type of signal which is called PWM. It's a pulse modulated width signal in which we have a periodic signal which is digital and usually commutes at very high frequencies and we can control with that signal the amount of time which is high correspondent to the amount of time which is at the lowest state. And we can use this kind of signal to control uh, motors or, and then we can uh, also, because it's uh, commutating uh, very fast, we can use analog filters and we can use them uh, as analog outputs. Okay, so also in microcontrollers we have interrupts, they are used to, uh, a special kind of signals, they are used to interrupt our main task and they have higher priority. So if our program is running a specific code, and we receive an interrupt, this code will be interrupted and then we'll attend a specific section of code which is called uh, the interrupt uh, handler and in this code we, we can uh, do a specific uh, or application dependent uh, uh, things. We have two different kind of uh, interrupts. We have external interrupts, means that we can monitor the changes of the signal, if it's high, if it's low or if it rises or uh, or we have also timers which generate interrupts at a given time intervals and we can program these uh, intervals as, as we want obviously. Then we also have different kind of bus signals. Bus signals are specialized kind of digital signals that we use to transmit data between a microcontroller and any kind of external device and within the most common, uh, commonly known uh, bus signals we have the UART, it's a serial communication uh, that uses two lines, one for reception, one for transmitting and it's, it's basically uh, uh, the purpose is for, uh, for being used, uh, be, uh, the communication between two devices. Then we have the I2C, uh, it's a serial communication too uh, in which we have a data line and a clock line and it uses an architecture which is called master-slave, so the master uh, handles the communications and the slaves receive a specific uh, package, packages and, uh, and responds back to the master for instance. And then we have the SPI um, uh, communication which is a full duplex communication which uses a clock but then also uses uh, data signals, one for the master and, and also one for the slave. And also we have a slave selection signal, so we can have multiple slaves and with that signal we can, uh, we can select specifically to which slave, uh, slave uh, talk to. In microcontrollers we have basically two types of memory, it's the program memory and that data memory. The program memory is where we store our code, it's non-volatile, 
means that we can we can uh, keep it there, upload it, and once we we switch off the, our microcontroller, the the, the data uh, in that kind of memory will be uh, persistent there. Uh, usually, it's large compared to data memory because it's cheap. Data memory, we have two different types of memories. We have the RAM memory, which is uh, volatile, and we can store variables uh, that, uh, that we use in our code, and will be fully deleted whenever we start up our microcontroller. And then we have uh, a special kind of memory, which is called ROM, or specifically the EEPROM. It's when we store long-term variables, so we can um, we can use them, uh, so it's non-volatile, and we can use them uh, once, uh, one, one time and another one. But this, in general, is shorter, because it's quite expensive. This is the architecture we usually find in many of the um, of, uh, microcontrollers. So the main masterpiece is the MCU, is microcontroller unit. It's uh, the brain of uh, our microcontroller. And then we have different kind of uh, peripherals and, and, uh, and memories. So we have a clock, which is signaling exactly how to uh, run our instructions. We have the program memory, we have described it, the data memory. We have the GPIO, it's the general purpose input outputs. Here we have um, the, the, the digital inputs, outputs, analog inputs, and so on. And also we have a special kind of signals like timers and interrupts or the analog digital converters as we described it before. So uh, it's important to distinguish uh, what's uh, the difference between a microcontroller and different kind of types of processors like a microprocessor, a DSP, or FPGA, maybe you heard about them. So microcontroller is very simple to use, it has a low consumption, has no operative system on it, this is one of the main differences between the microprocessor. Uh, obviously, uh, there's some drawbacks, like there's not too much uh, computational power, so there's no specialized hardware to do a, a, a floating point operations generally. And uh, yeah, of course, uh, um, it's, it's cheaper, but obviously has some drawbacks. A microprocessor, on, on the other hand, has some, an operating system. This is uh, something we can uh, see an advantage, but also it might be a disadvantage because it has a lot of complexity compared to a microcontroller. A DSP is similar to a microcontroller. It's specialized for signal processing, so it has a special hardware to do specific functions for processing signals. But it usually requires advanced knowledge to, to, to really make profit of a DSP. And uh, FPGI are very fast, uh, so they, they can, uh, they, they can um, work very fast, much faster than a microcontroller or a microprocessor. But you have to think like a circuit designer, because what actually what you're doing is synthesizing a circuit into a specific chip. And deployment is really slow if you don't have any experience before, okay? So microcontroller is probably one of your best options. So within microcontrollers and microprocessors, we have the Arduino Wi-Fi, probably you heard about it for sure. Uh, but we also have other kind of processors like DSP A266s or DSP32. They are cheap compared to Arduino, and the main advantage is that they have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth already integrated on it. Also, the Raspberry Pi is a very uh, 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 affordable uh, option if you want to deploy uh, IoT applications. And uh, you have uh, also the possibility to have SD, uh, Ethernet connection, a camera, and uh, an SD card to storage um, uh, things and so on. Okay, so it has a lot of advantages. And also the Raspberry Pi Zero W, which is the Wi-Fi, and um, it has a lot of advantages to compare to, to the Raspberry Pi 3 if you're thinking about the chip uh, development. So here we have some examples. Uh, a relay in which we can remotely control a relay with an ESP1 processor. And here we have uh, another example in which we can use a node MCU to control uh, a or to, to perform a weather station or we can have this uh, SP, SPS32 uh, uh, processor with, together with a multi-sensor uh, multi uh, shield in which we can uh, measure humidity, temperature, light, and many other things, okay, all together. And this is just simply one of the some of the examples that we can use uh, in, our, in our projects. Okay, so in this presentation, I have introduced you about microcontrollers that we use in IoT applications. Thank you very much for your attention.